Today, we're going to talk about how to make time to actually write a book, even when you're really, really busy. Hey folks, my name is Brooke Adams Law. I am an award-winning author. I am the founder and CEO of Writing Brave, which is a writing, coaching, and publishing company. And I'm also raising two young kids while I'm running my business and also writing my second novel. So all the tips I'm about to give you are things that I have actually tried myself and use every day to make time to do my own writing in the midst of all the craziness. So let's go. Okay, we are going to walk through five tips for how to create a writing routine that actually fits into your life. So tip number one is I want you to create a bite-sized writing goal. So this is a place where I see a lot of people go wrong, right? So they typically will do what I call setting an aspirational goal instead of setting an achievable goal. Does this sound familiar? So what I mean is that folks will say, I'm going to sit down and write for a whole hour or two hours every single day when they haven't written at all in maybe a long time or they haven't had a steady writing practice to begin with. So writing is sort of like going to the gym. Like if you're going to the gym for the first time or you haven't been there in a long time, you're not going to go lift the heaviest weights that you can possibly lift, you know, to exhaustion, right? That's how you injure yourself. So we're going to start not with an aspirational goal of like where you would like to be maybe like six months from now or whatever. We're going to start with an achievable writing goal. So this is something that is bite-sized enough that you can actually do it. Like when you think about it, you're like, oh yeah, that's totally doable in my life as it is right now, right? So we're not like, oh yeah, when everything settles down or when all the situations in my life are going perfectly, I could do that. No, this is like a bite-sized writing practice that can work like when your kid is homesick from school, which mine is today. Like when things are going crazy at work, when you have all these extra family obligations, right? So you want your bite-sized goal to work in your actual life. <laughs> so I recommend that you choose either a unit of time or a unit of words that you are going to produce in your writing either every day or every week, right? So personally, um, I am what I call a turtle. Um, you can take my quiz below that will tell you what kind of writing routine personality you have, and that might be helpful as you're setting your bite-sized writing goal. So I'm what's called a turtle. I like to write a little bit every single day. So right now in this season of my life, my writing practice is 200 words a day, like four or five days a week right? So for some people that doesn't work at all, right? They want to set a time limit. So you might start with something as little as 15 minutes and don't let your brain do the tricky thing that it might try to do, which is say that is so little time that it's not even worth it, right? Because in 200 words a day, which takes me about maybe 15 minutes, I have written 230 pages in the past like year or so, right? So it's taking me some time. And also if I had said that 200 words a, a day was not enough, I would be nowhere, right? With zero pages. So choose either a unit of time or a unit of words and commit to that on a daily or weekly basis, right? And you might start small and like add more as you as you achieve it, right? So we don't want to shoot big and then not meet the goal. We want to shoot small and meet the goal. And then if you want to increase the goal, it's easier to do that to build on your success than to shoot for something you're not sure you can accomplish and then fall short, which kind of can often trigger like that inner critic to be like, you're so stupid and lazy, right? And like kind of like all that negative chatter. You're never going to finish this book. Who do you think you are? You know, blah, blah, blah. So choose a goal that you know that you can achieve and then build on your success if you want to expand it. Or you might find that like, oh, three days a week for 20 minutes at a time is perfect, right? Again, my quiz is below if you want to find out your writing routine personality, because you might not want to work every day. You might want to set what's called like a sprint day once a month where you say, I'm going to write 4,000, 5,000 words in one long day, right? Or maybe more. So there's all different ways of setting it up. But the point is, choose something small and then experiment with it. So see how it goes and then adjust according to how it actually goes. Okay. So tip number two for how to make time to actually write your book 
even when you're super busy, is to track your goal. Okay. So this sounds really simple and it also sounds kind of tedious and annoying. <laughs> and also this is literally the way that you're going to find out if you're actually meeting your goal or not. Otherwise you might not like know if you're meeting it or not. And your brain goes into like confusion, right? So create a tracking system that you're actually going to use where you write down, this is my bite-sized writing goal you know, unit of words or unit of time by day, by week, right? Whatever it is that you're doing, you write it down and then you put it somewhere you're going to see it every single day. So I actually track my own writing practice in my planner. I have like a paper planner. Um, don't worry, guys, I still use technology. However, I really like writing down my tasks. So I, I have a tracker in my planner where I write down my goal for that week. So, you know, 200 words a day. It's usually four days a week. And then I will write in the little, you know, daily bubble how many words I wrote each day. This also helps me see things like, you know, when I'm planning out my week, if I'm going to be traveling or if my kids are both off of school, like I might slim down my writing goal for that week. Like if they're going to be home for two days, I might only write for two or three days, right? Instead of four. Um, it, so it helps me kind of see like, okay, what's actually achievable for me this week? And I don't beat myself up if I don't get it done, right? I have a lot of other things on my plate. My kids are six and three at the time I'm doing this video. So, I mean, it's real. <laughs> it's real, y'all. Okay. So some other ways to track your goal. You can use, there's tons of apps where you can like set goals and, you know, like log your progress every day and maybe set, you could also set reminders or timers or like a calendar um, event on your phone. Um, you can print out just like, there's tons of like habit trackers just free on the internet. Um, so you could do that, right? I, I created one for my clients, which they can just like print out and again, like mark. So if you can do it digitally, you can do it on paper, but I want you to post if you're doing it on paper, I want you to post it where you're seeing it every day. If you're doing it digitally, make sure that it is like prompting you with reminders, like maybe more than once a day, right? So some sort of tracker where you are like on board, you're being reminded, you see it every day, or, or again, like if you're writing once a week, you see it once a week so that you're able to actually track your progress. So the next thing that I wanna say about tracking, which is really important, is that I want you to use the information that you collect, right? Which is like when you're tracking your progress towards your goal for that day or week or month or whatever it is, um, you use that information as information not to beat yourself up, not as evidence that you are a terrible human if you don't meet your goal, like, the first few times that you're aiming for it, right? You're going to use this information, this data as information to help you adjust your goal accordingly. So for example, in December, I thought to myself, you know, I have been doing so great with my writing, you know, 200 words a day. And I'm at kind of a critical point in my novel that I really thought like, you know what? I think it's time to go to 300 words a day. Like a lot of the time I was hitting 300 words anyway. And I was like, I'm just going to raise, you know, raise the benchmark for myself and make it 300 words a day. So I did that. And then I started noticing that I wasn't writing four days a week. And when I was, sometimes I wasn't even writing 200 words, right? So I would have a day where I hit 300 words and then I would hit like 100 words and then I would not write the rest of the week. So I just started noticing this pattern and it happened a few weeks in a row, right? So I was kind of letting things unfold. And then I reevaluated and I thought to myself, you know what? It's December. There's a lot happening, right? I was doing a launch in my business for my Secrets of Storytelling Mastermind. I was, you know, wrapping gifts for my family and, you know, doing all kinds of holiday stuff. And I was like, this is actually not a great time for me to increase my goal. So as soon as I dialed it back down to 200 words a day, I started meeting it with consistency again, right? So I used the data that I had collected from my tracking to say, you know what, like this goal, the new goal, the increased goal was not working for me. So I dialed it back down, right? So you might find that if you're not sticking to your goal, one of two things could be happening, right? One is you need to dial your goal down a little bit and make it more achievable. Or the other one is you need more reminders or accountability. 
So you can add accountability in the form of just asking somebody to remind you or help you, right? There's lots of ways to do accountability. Again, if you take my quiz below, which is all about finding your writing routine personality, um, there's ideas in the answers for accountability as well. All right, let's move on to tip number three, which is to be consistent. Right. So one of my clients, Kelly Thompson, who is the author of Closing the Confidence Gap, um, she wrote that book in my mastermind and I did her developmental edit and it just came out and it's fantastic. I was hoping to hold it up for you, but I don't have it right in front of me. So in any case, uh, when I was talking to Kelly about like how she was able to write her book so quickly, she went from zero pages to having the book totally done in about nine months. Um, she just said to me, consistency isn't sexy, but it works, right? So she talked about how like, consistency isn't like a quick fix, but it wins the day over time, right? So she had a writing time on her calendar every Wednesday afternoon for like three hours. And she did that consistently every single week. And then she also added in writing time on Sundays while her husband was watching football. She would just like sit on the couch next to him and like get into her book, right? So for her, that routine really worked. Um, but the point is to pick something that you can be consistent at and find ways to reward yourself when you are consistent, right? So be consistent, whatever writing practice you choose, be consistent with it. Okay, tip number four is when you fall out of your routine, get right back into it the next day, right? So when you don't meet your writing goal for the day or the week, and this will happen, get right back into your writing routine the very next day. So don't wait until Monday, right? Don't wait for a new month. Don't punish yourself or try to make up the writing that you missed. So if you're writing 200 words a day or whatever it is, 500 words a day, the next day, don't make yourself write a thousand words. No, <laughs> just the next day, write your 500 words again or whatever your goal is, right? Don't berate yourself for failing. Don't let your brain make it mean that you're never going to finish your book, that you're never going to be a real writer, right? Like it's going to try to do all of that stuff. Um, and just like as Brooke Castillo, amazing life coach says, like be on to yourself, right? Be on to yourself when your brain tries to do that and be like, oh, my brain's trying to prevent me from writing at all by making this mean that, you know, I missed a day. And so therefore I'm never going to be a writer. That's not true. Not true. Right. So when you miss a day or a week and you will, because life happens, right? People get sick, you know, things go crazy. Like it just happens, right? You get right back into it the very next day, week, whatever it is. Okay. Tip number five is my favorite and it is to add pleasure, so add pleasure to your writing practice and it will take you so far. So here are five ways you can add pleasure to your writing routine, um, which means that you'll look forward to it instead of dreading it, right? So one of my client's favorite tools for this is to purchase what I call writing chocolate which is chocolate or some other like sweet treat, or it could be like a fancy tea or like your favorite kind of coffee um, and only have it while you're writing. So you can't have it at other times of the day or week, right? So like um, if you're able to just have like two squares of chocolate, it's like those two squares are like only for times when you're actually physically writing and not for other times, right? So you're pairing that special treat with the habit that you want to start, which is your writing routine. So another way to add pleasure is I will often do like once a week, um, go to my favorite cafe and get myself a decaf oat milk latte, which is like my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> and I will just like sit there and like be able to see people and like hear all the sounds and then do some writing. So treat yourself however, you know, how often you want to by going to a favorite cafe or getting your favorite beverage and like letting that sort of fuel your writing time. Okay. Another really fun way to add pleasure to your writing practice is to create a custom playlist for your writing time. So obviously there's been so much written and talked about this for how some people can only listen to instrumental music when they're writing. Some people really ne need like music with lyrics to kind of give them something to hold on to. I really found that like 
listening to music with different emotions at different points in the book that I'm writing really helps, right? So for a long time, I had been listening to this like very quiet, like instrumental, sort of like flowy, relaxing music. And then I was, I'm at a really intense part of my book. Like I'm coming up to writing the climax and I was like, I need something more dramatic. So I started listening to a movie soundtrack. Um, it's like this epic, right? Like movie, like cinematic music. And it has actually helped so much, right? So create a custom playlist that that has music that goes with how you you want your book to feel emotionally. And then use that either while you're writing, or if you can't do music while you're writing, listen to it before you start writing. You could take a walk, right? And listen to it and sort of get into that headspace. Okay, another way to add pleasure to your writing practice is to set up a beautiful writing nook in your living space. It does not have to be big, right? Um, so, but this should be different from the space where you work if you work from home, right? So this could be an armchair. It could be like a floor cushion that you put in like a corner with a candle, right? You might bring in something beautiful like, um, you know, a crystal or a fuzzy blanket or a framed photograph or a piece of art that you really love, right? But create like a tiny nook that's different from your workspace if you work at home and make that your writing space and let it inspire you whenever you sit there to write. Okay, the last idea for adding pleasure to your writing routine is to invite a friend to meet you every week, either on Zoom or at like a physical cafe or something and write together. Even if your friend isn't writing, maybe they are like working on something or maybe they want to read a book while you are writing, you know, but make kind of like a, a friend date. So you have that added accountability of meeting up with somebody um, and it'll also add pleasure to your writing time. So those are the five tips. As a quick recap, number one is to create that bite-sized writing goal. Number two is to track your goal. Actually track it in a place where you will see it every day. Tip number three is to be consistent. So commit to being consistent to whatever bite-sized goal you choose. Tip number four is to get right back into your routine whenever you miss a day or a week or whatever it is. And the last tip is to add pleasure to your writing routine. So as I said before, I've got a quiz linked below that will help you find your unique writing routine personality. So it'll help you set that writing goal according to your personality. So go take that quiz, drop a comment in the uh, below this video and tell me what your quiz result was. I would love to hear it. So take care everybody and happy writing.